Boy, y'all like to watch Kevin run. I like to watch Kevin run. Derek's migrating to another spot right now. They gonna win? Come on, win. I had several questions about the new LX830 that we got. Uh, so far, it's done very well. We hadn't had but just one or two little minor, and I mean, when I say minor, I mean minor little issues is all. I mean, it wasn't really anything, nothing much uh, to it. I guess probably the worst thing is uh, the oil pan is going to have to be resealed on it. It's a little oil out of the, out of the gasket around it there. And Derek may have already had that done. I've been kind of, I, I really, they did some work on it the other day, and and uh, we've been running pretty good on this job, so I'm not sure, I didn't, I'm not sure what all they did to it the other day. So it's, it's hard for me to, uh, you know, to get up and down and film and stuff like that and check out what everything else is going on and load trucks at the same time. <laughs> it's all good, dude. Alright, so I gotta get on the phone here and make another t-shirt hoodie order. I am gonna make a mega order here right quick is what I'm about to do. So, as Arnold Schwarzenegger says, I'll be back. So Kevin just fired 850 John Deere dozer up right there. He's going to go out there and help Chad a little bit on a trail. We'll cut it, cut it a little bit, get get some clay on it there for him, help him drag some, or help Chad get up the hill some by doing a little work. Sometimes you can do that with a dozer and it makes a huge difference. <laughs> 6.30 just don't sound like that uh, 6.35. If it didn't have the emission stuff on it, it should be a moaning. So while Kevin's on the bulldozer, Chad's got some wood up here. I'm gonna jump on the processor and uh, run some right quick. While Kevin is down there, if I can keep from breaking my neck walking through these tops right here. Let's get inside this thing, show y'all what it looks like. It's run by uh, Windows PC. See, there's your keyboard. There's the screen right there. Let me get the door closed. <clears throat> Let's smoke her off here. <laughs> so there's 18 buttons on this side, and then there's a two-way trigger on the front. So there's 20 functions on each joystick in this thing. And then a lot of them, these are what they call the soft keys right here on the side. You can hit the soft key and it changes the function on something else. So actually, a lot of them are multifunction when you hit the soft key on them. <laughs> so it's a, it's a pretty wild ride in this thing, man. There's a lot of crap going on. You got, you got your length. That's the length to the butt saw and the red is linked to the top saw and the same thing over here that's the diameter at the butt saw and that's the diameter at the top saw what it'll do is it's not open all the way it opens up to uh, a little over 35 inches right there is what it opens up to and there's the hours he's got on it right there now 17,340 so I'm gonna shuck some trees through here right quick I am the only one on the crew who can run everything and uh, 
can run production on everything and drive a truck too. Uh, I used to haul a lot back in the day. I don't haul as much as I used to. So let me shuck some wood out here right now. All right, I've done caught Chad. Chad just thought he was gonna get the pile Kevin up. <laughs> so I've caught Chad and I'm gonna let y'all see what it looks like from Kevin's point of view when Chad comes into him right here. On this machine here, the closer you get the butts to it, the better off you are. So close butts or good butts. So just lays them right there just like that. Draws it, he'll probably get in some brush right there, right quick. So you can see he's roar, he works real close. It's when you're on this thing right here, everything's right in your face. Real in your face. Here, so he grabs it all up, he'll take it down there to a trail and smear it down there is what he'll do. So I'm about to climb down off of this thing here and I'm gonna let Kevin take it over. I may run one or two while I'm waiting on uh, while I'm waiting on him. That's a thumper right there, boy. So I went ahead and knocked that pile out he just pulled up there. That big one was tough. I had to <laughs> that was some what I would call advanced processing moves to get that one up. So I'm all I'm fixing to park the head over here and uh I'm gonna jump down and let Kevin let Kevin have her back. So those two trigger buttons that are on the front of each of those joysticks, which are right there, you see a trigger. You use the dog out of those because uh, one side works your knife arms and the other side works the drive wheels on it. So you run, you use them a lot. Uh, the the biggest thing, man, about the processor. Compared to a knuckle boom loader, trailer mounted loader, and pull through D-limber is the power. The power. I mean, it's just, I've got, uh, well, my last loader I had, I had right at 14,000 hours on the D-limber and the pull through, uh, pull through D-limber and, and the loader. So I've probably got about 20,000 hours on one of those contraptions. When you get on this thing here and start processing, when you hit the button, something's fixing to happen. It ain't no, if it's gonna happen, or maybe it's gonna happen, when you mash the button, it's going to happen. <laughs> Trust me, it does a lot better job. Even this old big in here. If I get back up in there again, I'll grab the GoPro and throw it up in there. So we're gonna finish loading old Frank here. Those are telephone poles right there. They're going to uh, Cahaba, Alabama down there. That's where those are going to. All right, Frank's about to pull out those poles. Look at uh, those are some good ones right there. A lot of overhang on them. A lot of overhang. In Alabama, the overhang doesn't matter. So I got me a couple more here to load, feeding frenzy at the shark tank right now. So we're wrapping the day up. That's number 17 on that truck over there. That one log that I ran a while ago that I showed y'all, it was, it was a good bit bigger than that one right there. That one log weighed 7,200 pounds is what, what that thing weighed. So it was a... Uh, my size pine log. I think tomorrow we're gonna move. We're gonna come off the road up there where Chad's truck is, and there's a road that we've done pushed out that goes all the way up there on top of that hill up there. I think that's where we're gonna be moving to. Where when y'all be watching the move video while we're moving up there. So about to shut her on down and hop on down here. Right. Here. It's 25 degrees this morning, and it just barely hit 40 today. It's uh, tonight, I think it's supposed to go down a little bit colder than that. And uh, so we'll, we'll see. Had a heck of a frost this morning on my loader. I think uh, wind's blowing right now, so if it'll kind of keep blowing a little bit tonight, there really won't be any frost in the morning. So that'll be a, uh, that'll be a good thing. So a lot of times I'll be filming something about Tiger Cat somebody in the comments will pipe up and say man you need to get a John Deere you need to get a John Deere <laughs> I don't know how many John Deere's we've bought over the years this is our last brand new one that we bought we've actually got one that's a little bit newer than this one but this is a uh, but we bought it used this is a 1999 model 748 G2 that we bought new 
and it's got a lot of hours on it it was a good this has been a good good machine for us we've got it over here now because we've got our 635 uh, Jay pulled the bogey apart on it today and he found a problem it really is not that big a deal we shut it down at the right time though before it got you know for it messed the housing up or anything like that so that was good but this has been a good machine for us always crank this has got a 8.1 liter engine in it in my opinion the best engine John Deere ever built was 8.1 liter just a good big bore lot of torque engine man really really good and so we put one engine in this thing and one transmission in it the transmission we had a snap ring break in the transmission and boy it tore up some stuff I mean it when it broke it dropped went down in between the gears and you talking about tear up some stuff the transmissions in the to go behind 8.1 liters they're very expensive to fix too I mean you're gonna spend 20 20 plus thousand dollars on one if you build it back right we broke uh, this machine has 1400 series axles up under we broke several axles on the back back there with it over the years probably three or four one of them we broke and when it broke and the housing hit in the rim it burnt the housing and we had to put a whole housing on it there's a lot of uh, people that say that about John Deere's like I said we've had a bunch of them and we, so we've been there done that and got the t-shirt on it you know and uh, this machine here was good and we did have some electrical issues with it that we finally worked out but here's the problem with John Deere I want to know why it took John Deere so long to get rid of all this stuff over here and the steering wheel I don't think John Deere ever had any intentions of getting rid of all this stuff over here until Tiger Cat come along and they built a better mouse trap because this is your winch this is your gear shift forward reverse gears it's got a power shift transmission in it there's your blade and this is your this is your boom all this on your dual arch boom is on this this is your grapple <laughs> And that's your rotate. The Tiger Cat came out with one joystick that did every bit of this right here. One joystick. And put the steering wheel on a joystick. You run this machine all day long. You talking about fatigue, man. Especially if you're in heels like this and you're having to work the machine. You talking about fatigue. You can get on the same Tiger Cat and run it with the two joysticks run the whole machine with two joysticks and never have to move your hands because look you're shifting gear you're bumping gears right here and then you're working all of this stuff right here blade and everything in here and then you're steering it so we don't really want uh, I mean, any more John Deere skitters? It's plain and simple. But it's gonna crank it, move this thing around. A little bit. This thing is still running. Let's see how many hours this thing's got on it. 17,453 hours is what it's got on it now. See, that's what you got to do to go to reverse. So you don't have to use a clutch, but you got a clutch. We'll point 
this thing to the south here. So that north wind ain't blowing right in the engine. It's still strong, man. It'll still pick the front end up on it. These are good good machines, like I said. It's just that I don't think John Deere was fast enough on improving them like they should. I think they tried and then they got really behind. It's just like this center section right here. For years, this bottom center section right here had no cover on it. It was just an open pin sticking up. You could grease that thing. You could grease that thing till you blew a grease gun up. 1,200 hours or so, sometimes sooner than that, depending on what you're running in here in the south and the dust that we run in, that center section be eat up. I could take this machine on a Friday afternoon and pull it into my shop on a Friday afternoon, break this machine in half by myself. I wish I was still filming videos or was filming videos when I used to do that. Break the machine in half, pull it apart, take and blow the center section completely out. I replaced the whole thing because you could buy the kit and it had the whole thing and all you did was just cut this one out and put the new one in there and weld it in. And I could have it done on Sunday afternoon. I did a bunch of them like it. I was doing them for other people too. But, uh, and then deer finally, they put a sealed cover on it right there. And that stopped it just like that. Now when you're working on these things all the time, that stuff like that gets very frustrating.